anniversary, Discovery Church. Come on, give God all the praise. Not to us, not to us, but to the Lord be all the glory. Every year, this, this anniversary is a special day for us. We like to celebrate. We like to remember. You know, the world parties to forget, but the church parties to remember. Amen, somebody? So today, I believe God's given me a word for us for today, for this season, for our 11-year anniversary. And we're going to look ahead with vision. But first, let me share with you where we're going after today. Just a few things, not in your notes or anything. But our next sermon series, starting next week, is called The Blessed Life. How many of y'all want to be blessed? I mean, we all want a blessed life, right? But what if it's not what you think it is, okay? So I want to teach you what actually the blessed life is and help you achieve the blessed life in this next series. And then on September 22nd, we have Recommitment Sunday. For some of you, this is going to be a recommitment. And for others, this might be the first time commitment to our unstoppable vision at Discovery Church. Now, you heard me say it in the video last year, we kind of were, were at this crossroads where we're out of room in our building, in our spaces, and we decided like to not stop. We said, what would it look like if we were an unstoppable church? And we said, and not only an unstoppable church, but we're on an unstoppable mission, living with unstoppable faith. And these three things became like three pillars of our vision for our future, our unstoppable church mission in faith, and I'll tell you more about that later on in the service and in the weeks to come leading up to Recommitment Sunday. But the next sermon series after the blessed life, I'm so excited about it, I just want to put it on your radar, is called Truth Over Trend. And in, in a world where trends and beliefs and ideas are constantly changing, it's so easy for a lot of people, even believers, to get swayed by the latest movement. But as followers of Christ, our foundation and our worldview must be on the truth of God's word. So in this series, I'm gonna confront the most controversial cultural issues head on. I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna con the contrast the popular opinion of culture with the biblical truth. And I don't really care if it offends you. I love you too much to not share with you the truth that sets you free. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about gender. We're going to talk about politics. We're going to even talk about toxic feminism versus godly womanhood. And I'm not going to leave it just one-sided either because I'm going to talk about toxic masculinity versus what it means to be a true man of God. So, so put, on, put on your big boy pants and get ready, okay? Because I'm going to put the truth of God's word over the trends of this world, okay? And then later on in this year, uh, we're closing out the year with our Big Give Sunday is on December 8th. And I always like to give you this date early and in advance so you can pray about your final donation, like your year-end giving. And this is an important one for us because we are closing escrow on this new property right next to us on January 31st. The property we're, we're leasing right now. And it's so amazing what God has done. Honestly, every year it is, it's a time of reflection and remembrance for all of us. And, and, and I remember, I remember where we start. I remember being out here on White Lane, you guys. Some of you have heard this story before. Years ago, it was like in 2012, you guys. Some of y'all don't remember that. Some of y'all probably won't even, I don't know. Okay, 2012, out here on White Lane in Gosford in in. And I was so surprised because, uh, like, like I, I didn't travel over in the southwest side very much at that time in my life. I was an east side kid. How many east siders up in here? Gangsters, watch them right now. Ushers, keep an eye on every one of these people who raise their hands. You know, not trustworthy. No, I'm just kidding. So, but I would, hadn't been out here in Southwest very often. I was surprised with the, like the explosion and all the growth. And there was so much traffic. And I remember being so upset about the traffic and frustrated. But in the middle of this traffic jam and my frustration on White Lane and Gosford, the Lord spoke to me and told me I was going to plant a church in Southwest Bakersfield and reach the people that I was frustrated at in the traffic. And so my frustration and anger turned to just overjoyed and tears and my tears started flowing. I'm like, I'm sobbing in my car and this dude in the truck looks at, I turn, he's looking at me like, this dude's having a breakdown. And I'm like, no, no, I'm going to pastor you one day. That's it. I'm good. I'm good. And that just turned into us just, Pastor Veronica and I, sharing the vision with a few people. We had 34 people we started with in a house in Southwest Bakersfield here. And, 
And then we leased, uh, that kind of outgrew the home, so we leased this building. It's like you could throw a stone and hit it. This building right here on Shirah Court, this, we leased one unit that, that could cram 120 people in, and then we leased another unit for our kids' ministries. Now, the kids' ministries had classrooms and air conditioning, but the worship center on the adult side had no AC. And we, we launched our church this way, you guys, in Bakersfield with no air conditioning, but nothing, I'm telling you, nothing could stop the move of God. Everybody knew something special was happening. It was, we tapped into something. There was a culture, a community, a vision, the breath and the power of God that just drew people every single week to our damp, humid, sweaty, nasty place. And they just kept giving their life to Jesus and kept coming back. And we all knew like, this is special. Something is happening here. We had to go to like multiple services in this tiny space. We knocked down that wall eventually and leased another unit. And we got to go to 240 chairs in that worship center and, and, and put an AC condition in and, 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 and continue to grow little by little. And, and then this building was available for like seven years. We got this building. It was a miracle how we got this building, you guys. Some of y'all have heard the story. This land was owned by Billy Graham, you guys. We did not know that before we got this land, that there was a vision for this land, and it was consecrated for the kingdom of God, and no one occupied it, no one, it sat empty until the Lord moved Discovery Church into this place for his glory. Now, the worship center was just like a portion of this, and then we're standing in where the offices used to be, and that used to be kids' ministry right there, and little by little, we knocked down that wall, and then that wall, and then that wall, and then, and now we're like, we're out of, we're out of room again, and that's where the vision comes in to expand, get more land, and continue to reach people for Jesus. Thousands of baptisms later, thousands of, of salvations later, so many lives changed. Let me give you an unstoppable verse. If there ever was one in the Bible, here it is, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. So now, church, after 11 years, let us not become weary in doing good, we're not going to stop. How many of you say amen? We're let's not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And many times we give up really not because it's hard, but because we've lost hope. If you're thinking about giving up on something today, your marriage, your job, your calling, your career, if you're thinking about giving up, it's not necessarily because it's hard, it's because you got weary you lost hope. That word weary, by the way, in the original language of the New Testament in Greek, it's ekakeo. And that word literally means, you guys, to be weary means to be utterly spiritless, to be out of breath, to be exhausted. And the Bible says, don't run out of the breath of God. Don't become weary in the mission and the assignment that God has given us because we're going to reap a harvest if we keep the Spirit of God moving in this place. So the Apostle Paul says to Timothy, his protege, and I pray and ask God, God, give me a word for this 11th year. And I feel like he's given me one out of this, this chapter and verse. He says to his protege, Timothy, and I want to say this to you today. I want you to receive it like a charge and hear my heart. Second Timothy chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, what you heard from me, and I would add, what you've seen over the past 11 years, Discovery, you got to keep this. And I pray, you guys, I pray all the time that we would never become a normal church, that we keep this beautiful thing that God is doing. The, just a few months ago, my first pastor actually visited Discovery for the very first time. He sat right up here, and it was my first pastor visiting for the very first time, and he told me afterwards, we talked and connected, and he said, Jason, what you got here isn't normal. It's special. It's supernatural. And, and I, I, don't, I don't ever want to lose. I don't ever want to be, this is one of my fears. It's not good to have a fear, but I'm going to be honest with you. One of my fears is that we would just wake up one day and be, be a normal church. That all the power, all the anointing, all the, all the move and breath of God would be like somewhere else and not be on us. I don't ever want to be a normal church. we got to keep this. The Apostle Paul says, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. And then he says, guard the good. And he says, the good deposit. Can you imagine with me that these 11 years weren't really what God was trying to accomplish, 
but that these 11 years were just the deposit of what God yet wants to do in the next 11 years. He says, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you and say these two words, these next two words out loud with me. One, two, three, guard it. Yeah, I feel like the Lord has given me a word today on how do we guard this beautiful, special, abnormal, supernatural move of God as the apostle Paul is trying to tell his protege Timothy, this is beautiful, this is the kingdom, this is moving, but you gotta guard it. You gotta guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. So how do we guard it? How do we guard this? I'm going to give you five things to do to guard it on this 11-year anniversary. Number one, church, let's guard our passion for more of God. Let's guard this. We can't ever get to the place where we're like, well, I got it. <laughs> well, I'm good. I'm good. I'm as close to God as I need to be. I'm, ex I'm as excited and I'm as passionate as I need to be. And I'm talking to some of you who, by the way, need to take more steps toward God who need to go more all in than you thought you were all in. Like there is yet more to get from God. Some of you never even dream that you'd be in a church like this, but here you are. Some of you never thought you'd be singing praises and worshiping God, but have yet to give God your best praise. Every time it gets there and you start to sing out loud, you hear your cracky, sorry voice, and you're like, uh-oh, someone can hear me, and you stop, you stop, right? Uh-oh, but some of you just need to give, woo, and turn loose on your praise in this place. I will yet be more undignified than this, than sitting and standing down here, giving God my best praise. Don't let the football gods get more praise than Jesus today, somebody. I'm going to give you one more opportunity because some of you know you're going to be shouting it down later. Give you one more opportunity to not feel like you're a hypocrite. Give God some praise so you can do that later. So we got to guard this. But, but it's beautiful. It's awesome. It's powerful. But we got to guard our passion for more of God. Jeremiah 29, 13 says it like this. God says, you will seek me and you will find me. But it's on a condition. Here's the condition. When you seek me with all your heart. And for 11 years, I've been asking you, church, and I'm asking you today, give us a year of your life. Give us one year of your life. Like, give God, give, give this church thing, give the faith thing, and I'm telling you, it's not gonna take a whole year. It isn't gonna take a whole year. But give us a year of your life and go all in. Like, like if you're, this is what that means. If you're in town, and there's a service, if you're in your town that weekend, come to the service. If there's a pray, pray with us and fast with us. If there's a night of worship, go to it. If there's something for couples, do it. If there's small groups, sign up for it. If there's a dream team, serve on it. Like, get the, run the play. Just run the play for one year, this faith play. And I'm telling you, it won't take a year, but I'm telling you, at the end of that year, you're going to go, oh, my goodness. This was the best year of my life. You know why? Because you found God. And you find God when you give all of your heart. I'm asking you not to just be a church attender, but to jump in. Half-hearted faith yields half-hearted results. Surrender fully to God, and I'm telling you, watch him move. The reality is, the more you hold back, the more you miss out. But when you trust God with everything, he'll give you more than you ever dreamed of. True transformation begins at this place when you stop dipping your toes in faith and you dive deep into God's purpose for your life. So here's the question that we should all ask ourselves. And I'm asking this of myself. After 20 years of being a pastor and in ministry, I'm asking myself this question. What do I need to do to go all in with God? What do I need to do? Because I have yet, what do I need? Can we go all in with God? And the church said a good I'm asking you to go all in. Here's the second thing we need to guard. We need to guard our pursuit for the lost. Man, I'm begging you, church, not to be one of those people who say, don't you think we're big enough? Do you really need a bigger building? I mean, come on, really? Really? You're perfectly fine with your team getting a bigger, better stadium, but we can't build a bigger church for the kingdom of God? Are you kidding me? 
Make sense. Make that make sense because you want to call yourself a child of God, but you reason like a child of the world. Make it make sense. So, yeah, as long as there's lost people who need Jesus, we are not going to lose our pursuit for the lost. We're going to never stop searching because God never stopped searching for you. And he never stopped searching for me. Justice Brandt, a member in our church here, just shared his story recently at our Night of Freedom. Some of you heard it. But Brandt came to Discovery a little over a year ago, almost two years ago now, high as a kite, high, like, like on it, okay, Ad- addicted to drugs, living a homosexual, uh, homosexual lifestyle, believing the lies of the enemy. It told him about his identity. He said when he came here, he doesn't even remember what was preached, but he knows what he felt. See, people don't always remember what you said, but they remember how you make them feel. Your impact, listen to me, our impact as a church isn't in our speech, it's in our spirit. And Brant caught the spirit that day. He caught the spirit in this place and in the people who loved him and welcomed him openly in this place. He's now, now what he's doing, he's pursuing becoming a pastor and he's in seminary right now. And he's, and he's leading a small group this season for LGBT community getting support, deliverance, and freedom in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep reaching and building and multiplying and planting and rescuing churches as long as there are lost people. Jesus said it like this in Luke 15, 4. If a man has a 100 sheep and one of them gets lost, what's he going to do? Won't he leave the 99 others? Let me tell you something, church. Jesus, God will leave us. He'll leave. If we make this a holy huddle, and we're not, the only way that you can stay, that we can stay close to Jesus, the only way that we can be close to the anointing is we join him in the pursuit. Because he's going, I'm telling you, he's out there and he's searching. And the only way we can stay close to the heart of Jesus is we don't come closed in, but we go and pursue with him and alongside of him. He says he'll go into the wilderness and search for the ones he lost until he finds it. We're going to be part of that. We're going to think of ways that we can get lost people to come to this place and hear the message of hope. We're going to do our best to create services and experiences here that not only equip you who are the found and the discipled, but actually make sense to people who don't know this stuff. And I hear it all the time. Some people say, well, that doesn't, no, no, you can't do that. You can't reach, but no, you can. Are you telling me God can't do something? Are you saying God can't do that? that we cannot equip the called and reach the lost. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the same story. Like just a few weeks ago, this, this gentleman named Frank, an elderly man, a veteran, who started attending Discovery with his 14-year-old daughter, Olivia. A few months ago, driving by the church after years, seeing all the cars on the lot, made him wanted to come in with his family. They attended, started attending during At The Movies. Frank recently said after one of our services that he and his family has grown more in the two months here than his lifetime anywhere else. Okay, so don't tell me it's not possible for you to be equipped by the teaching ministry and that's not reach the loss here. And I'm looking at more people, more stories here out in the audience right now that people that, that say I've grown more here. While we're, yes, it can happen and we're gonna do our best to do it. I'm just... We're going to reach those far from God. And I'm asking you not to get tired of that, church. To not not get tired. Don't get tired of me telling you, hey, we need your seat. You know, uh, you know, can, you, can, they, can you attend a different service for the, main, for the big services that we have? I tell them often, we get to this point, I'm like, you know, this is the service that people attend, they like to attend. Can, would you mind if, if you're able to attend one of these other, other services? And you're like, oh yeah, I can do that because you understand why we're here. Mark 16, 15, Jesus said to his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to who? Everyone, everywhere, everyone, everywhere, everyone. This is our motto at Discovery Church. As long as I'm the pastor, we're gonna gonna go everywhere and reach everyone, not a particular crowd, not a leaning of this way. No, 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 everywhere and everyone in Jesus' name. So the question I want you to ask yourself today is who can I invite to church? Who? can I invite to church? Partner with me in this mission because the greatest act of love is leading someone toward the one who loved them the most. And you're not just inviting them to church. Listen, you're inviting them to hope. 
You're inviting them to healing. You're inviting them to a new beginning. We're going to guard the passion. This is what we're going to do, you guys, as we move forward. we got to guard the passion. we got to guard the pursuit. Now, number three, we got to guard the priority of connecting in authentic, honest relationships. And the Bible tells us that we as humans have this tendency in our human nature to just say, well, I got this all by myself. I don't need people. I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that thing. I don't need groups. I don't need people. I don't need, I don't need that. Hebrews 10, 25 says, let us not give up meeting together. As some have gotten in the habit of doing, you get in the habit of isolation. You get in the habit of not being present. You get in the habit of doing it yourself. Let's not be like that, church. But let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the capital D day, judgment day approaching. So what do we do? We got to prioritize groups. You got to get into a small group. And I'm not even asking you to measure if it's convenient. I'm saying make room for it and do it. Do it. Every one of us have to have someone in our life where we're taking off our mask and we're going, here's what I'm really dealing with. Now, you don't need to tell everybody, but you need to tell somebody. Everybody needs somebody. They can tell, hey, I'm really in trouble right here. This is where I'm in trouble, guys. Everybody needs that. And when you look at all the groups, we have them on our app, by the way. Download the app. It's updated. It's new. Download that app. The group topics that you'll see, they're just the hook. The value really isn't in the topic and the curriculum. The value is in the people leading that you'll be meeting with that's going to change your life one day. Every, every time I lead groups, I'm a part of a group. I'm so amazed at the, the power of, of community. Here recently, a couple of seasons ago, I led a fire group. One of our men's groups that just meets monthly. We have a lot of men's groups that meet weekly, but fire groups meet monthly. There's quite a few of them meet on the same day across our city, but I was leading one a few seasons ago, and, and all I did is I sit these guys around a fire in a circle, and, and, and I ask them, okay, guys, here's what we're going to do. I want you to describe how you're feeling about something you're experiencing. That's it. I want, how are you feeling about something you're experiencing? And I, yeah, I'm t I ask guys to talk about their feelings, you guys. So, and I'm like, and I'll go first, and I'll go first. Because I'm, I'm going to model some vulnerability for you guys. And I remember in, in just a few seasons ago, we started our first fire group. And I said, how are you feeling about something you're experiencing? Let me go first. And I share with them what I was experiencing. And I was, ex I was going through what I didn't know but was for an anxious season that I didn't even realize that I was, I was anxious. But the way that I was carrying some of the worry and the weight in my life had an effect on my mind and body that I didn't even know. My eye, like, started twitching out of nowhere. It just, it just started twitching. I'm like, what is this thing? And it just it gave me a signal, like, wait, like... Am I carrying something wrong? So I admitted to the men, I'm like, sometimes my willpower goes beyond my mind and my body is able to, and I push myself beyond the limit. I don't even realize I'm pushing myself, but I just need to admit that to you guys and say, I need some help. I need some help to carry some of the weight I'm carrying, and will you pray for me? Because I feel like I push myself beyond the limit here, and my body is telling me something, and I'm, I, I need your prayers. And, and, and it just everyone was just like, oh my goodness, this, is, this pastor just opened up. Next person next to me just shares some deep stuff, some dark stuff. And one at a time, these guys just open up and share their heart. Here's the question I want you to answer with this one. Will I let someone know the real me? Will I let someone know the real me? Because that's what groups are all about. They're not many church services. They're not like Bible, many Bible lessons. In fact, you can learn a Bible lesson without us. But what you can't do without us is you can't heal and you can't have authentic community. That takes other people. You need someone to know the real you. So what are we going to do, church, as we're moving forward, as we're seeing the unstoppable vision unfold? Okay, we got to guard the passion, the pursuit, the priority. Number four, we got to guard the progression of spiritual growth. I'm asking you to guard this, church, because the spiritual life is a journey, and it actually has progressive steps. Like, because... But Philippians chapter 3 says this, and I'm talking to any, those of you who serve God and been in church and a Christian a long time, and I'm saying, if the apostle Paul isn't done, then you're not done. Philippians 3 says, Paul says, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I, Paul, the apostle Paul is saying, man, I still got some steps to take. I still got some growth to do. I still got some things to walk out in my faith. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. 
So I'm asking you to guard this, to not get comfortable in your church attendance, to not get comfortable in your spiritual season. Guard your progression of revelation and growth that God is yet to do in your life. So here's the question, what's your next step spiritually? What is your next step? Because I promise you, if Paul has one, you got one. If I got one, you got one. We all have some next steps to walk out because you can stay where you are or you can grow. And you got some of those steps are happening today. Our track to discover a purpose class is today. You can discover your purpose and get connected to a team. You can come back at three, record the game, man, and do something to make a difference with your life, okay? Come to track two, learn your purpose, get connected to a team. Later on this month, actually September 15th, the following week here, is our group leader orientation. Some of you have been in groups and around God and around the word, and you got wisdom and experience that's just untapped potential, and you need to step into making disciples instead of always needing to be discipled. You got you to step into some group leadership. Our, in a few weeks, we have our water baptism. You know, so far this year, we've added, I'm talking about in documented connection cards, because we have like 80-something thousand people that have prayed to receive Jesus at Discovery in 11 years, but not just hands, in the connection cards. People said, this is me. We've had 1,909 salvation cards, okay, and 550 baptisms this year. I'm talking about this year. <laughs> this year. Now, if we're a biblical church, the amount of people that we would baptize would be equal to the amount of people that got saved. 1,909 people. That's about double the amount. That, that means some of you are making a commitment and a profession, but you're not taking the next step. You got an accept. Acts 2.41 says those who accepted this message were what? They were baptized. There is a next step for every single one of you. In fact, if you download our church app, it actually is new and updated. There is a page that says next steps on it, and it has all the next steps listed. Your initial next steps, and then for those of you that want to go deeper because you've done that, there's all these core courses and next steps that we've designed here at Discovery for you to grow in your faith, in your word, theology and hermeneutics and freedom and all kinds of finances. We have intentional steps for you to walk out your faith. If you just download that app and go to the next steps, I promise you, you could find a next step for you. You have a next step. So what are we going to do? We're going to guard the passion. We're going to guard the pursuit, the priority, the progression. And then lastly, number five, write this down, church. Let's guard our participation in our church. Don't just attend church. Be the church. Don't just come. That's no fun, man. Don't just be a consumer. Be a contributor. Don't say things like, hey, when are you guys going to build that building? No, no, no. It's when are we going to build the building? I'm asking you to own it, okay, because these, these are your drums, and this is your screen. Don't take it with you when you leave. I need it next Sunday, but I'm just saying it's yours. Own it. I need you to own it because, listen, we are coworkers in God's service, the apostle says, we're like co-laborers, and I'm asking you the same thing that I asked those 34 people in the living room 11 years ago. I'm asking you, and I'm telling you, listen, I'm not anything special. I really am not. I'm just linked arm in arm with the greatest people on the planet, you guys, and I need you. I don't know if I've told you that lately, church, but listen to me. I need you. I need you beside me. I need you to, to, to co-work with me. I need you to serve with me. I need you to grow with me. I need you to pray with me. I need you to fast with me. I need you to give with me. I need, I need you. I need you as a co-worker in God's service. Look what he says. You are God's field. This is the Apostle Paul talking about the church he planted. You're God's field. God's building. It ain't, it ain't that. It's you. By the grace God has given me, Paul says, I laid the foundation for this church plant as a wise builder and someone else is building on it, meaning we got all these groups and teams and, and things going on and you're building and you're building and you're building and you're doing it. But each one, listen to me, make sure you build on top of this beautiful thing that God has done with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that was already laid, which is Christ Jesus. If anyone builds on this foundation, using anything of this world, anything that doesn't come from the kingdom, anything that doesn't come from God, gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw. He's just saying, if you build anything that doesn't come from the kingdom of God, their work will be shown for what it is. What you work, 
And what you do will be shown for what it is because that day, that judgment day, big capital D is coming. It will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire what you've been building. And the fire will testify the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder, you, the builder, is going to receive a reward for how you built on the foundation that God created. You're going to receive, God says, I'm gonna, you're going to get the reward in heaven. But if it's burned up, the builder, that's you, will suffer loss, but yet will be saved. So here's what Paul is saying. So, so I'm saved, but he says, but what a waste. What a, what a loss that we spent all of our life after receiving Jesus, wasting our energy and our time and our focus on our attention. It went to things that literally did not count in God's estimation. It burned up. So you're saved, but he goes, but what a waste of your talent. What a waste of your life. It all got burned up. So great, welcome into the kingdom of heaven, but what a, what a waste. Last year, we started this unstoppable initiative, which, which is a, a discipleship journey here that included trusting God with your resources. And our goal was and is 100% of those who call Discovery Home would just participate. And I don't know what God would challenge you to do, but I, I wanted us all to be a part of what God is doing and participate. We've heard so many stories of God meeting people at their place of faith and generosity. And before I give you your final fill-in and your notes today, because I know you're ready to check out right after I give you the final fill-in, I want you to hear one of those amazing stories. Check out this screen, you guys. My name is Steven. My name is Emily. And this is our unstoppable story. I've been coming to Discovery for about two years now. And recently we got, uh, we just got married uh, by cord and our, our wedding ceremony is just coming up. So we're in the midst of all the yeah. crazy wedding planning and just like a great start of a journey, but something that's very new and something we've never experienced before. I grew up um, always tithing. It was something that like, I don't want to say it was forced in my family, but it really was like any Christmas money, birthday money. If you got money mowing the lawn, like my dad would be like, did you tithe? And honestly, I think back then I used to see it as a struggle, but I now realize how blessed I was um, because it's been instilled to me as a child that the importance of a tithe. The tithing was something that I was accustomed to or used to. However, like, what was it when Unstoppable started in June uh, of last year? Pastor Jason challenged us to um, think a little further than that and, you know, really pray on uh, whether we would be open, you know, to giving or tithing a little bit more than just their 10%. I did talked to Steven about it before we filled our card. And so when he brought up a percentage, I was like, oh my gosh, like how are we gonna do that? And after a lot of wrestling and praying, I, um, I finally agreed and I said, Lord, like I'm gonna trust you with this. Um, you know, if this is something that you believe we can do, then I have to be, you know, full force behind my husband and agree. And so we did. You know, a year ago, Unstoppable started I think for me personally, there was a point where it's like, okay, God, we're like, is a miracle happening in us or is it just a church building? Mm -hmm. And like, I think we like believe like, no, we need this for the church. We need the church to grow, that this is going to open so many doors and opportunities. But I think there was a, a part deep inside of me where I stopped believing that breakthrough could happen in our lives. Yeah. And I just think that the word unstoppable just became white noise. Yeah. So... We both, like not coincidentally, um, got our one-year evals around the same time. Um, and I was reminded of the verse, you know, like, that I will go before you, like you need not to worry. I remember getting a text and a phone call from her. I was at work and she called me and she sent me all these messages like, like I just got this amount of raise. And I'm like, what the heck? Like she told me, she told me like how much it was gonna be, she's salary, and then I was like, there's no way that that's what they gave you. Yeah. So eventually she goes on to calculate the number and that's when we notice that's the exact, to the T, that's the exact percentage increase that we did for Unstoppable. And it, it didn't even just stop there. It didn't stop there. She, you know, not only got her raise for the original percent of Unstoppable, but God ended up blessing us with like another 7% more after that. So it almost felt like God was like, I'm giving you this number intentionally so you know yeah, like what I'm doing, see. like how I'm yeah. moving, that it was me. 
And then God said, but I'm not done. Like, I'm going to give you another, like, even more favor. And so just like when we felt like, oh, man, God, like, okay, no, like, God, that, that's it. Um, we then started praying and started looking for um, a home to live since we're mm-hmm. getting married. So we found this house that we immediately just fell in love with. The location was perfect. It was right across the church. As soon as we saw the pictures and just walking up to the front door, we immediately fell, mm-hmm. fell in love. And uh, before even entering the doors, um, our realtor Mm -hmm. was warning us. He's like, hey, I'm just letting you guys know this one on the market last night. And he's like, every 15 minutes all day, there has been families coming in and out. And he let us know, hey, this is gonna be a very hard home to get. And not to get our hopes up, it it came to the point that night where we just, um, we really broke down before the Mm -hmm. Lord. Um, Mm -hmm. We prayed and I think both of us were a little vulnerable just saying, God, I'm scared. It really just took a lot of surrender and said, God, um, if this is our home, you're going to give it to us. And if it's not our home, you're going to bless us with another one. We surrendered it to God and we just believe that regardless what happens, you know, um, he will take care of us. Five days later, um, I'm at church. It's a Sunday and I'm serving and I get interrupted by a man and he, he asked me, hey, is your name Emily? And I said, yes. And he says, oh, are you the person that just put in an offer on this street? I said, yes. And um, he's like, well, we actually recognize your guys' names and we want to give you guys a house. We want to take your offer. And so immediately I'm ecstatic. Me and Pastor Veronica were like jumping around, dancing around. We're like, oh my gosh, like we have a home. <laughs> and I'm just thinking this man, like, like I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I couldn't believe that the house that we prayed for we we fell in love with i couldn't believe it that this this you know we got it i think what all this reminded me of was just here we are at the one year mark and god's saying i i'm not done i'm not finished and we're just scratching the surface level and so i'm thinking about a new heart of like who am i to get in the way of what he wants to do and who am i to not believe in what he's gonna do when i first got my raise i just felt seen by the lord i think that for me, it was a reminder of, you know, I haven't forgotten, you know, your faith. I haven't forgotten the fact that you trusted me. I think that it was just a reminder that, you know, God's not done. The Bible says, like, if, if you who are humans, you know, can give your sons a good gift, like how much more, you know, I who am God would give a good gift. Um, and I just feel so blessed and, you know, so, so excited to see what's to come. Come on, ain't that an awesome story? Do me a favor. Will you take out these things and just put these in your hand real quick? Just before we, we conclude, I, I want to point your attention to both of these. Because those of you that may not be familiar with this vision that we're in the halfway point or one-year point of a two-year vision of Unstoppable, this kind of explains where we're at and what it is. And if you go online, there's a lot more, again, on the app and stuff. There's a lot more information. But there's also this commitment card. And as we get closer to Commitment Sunday, September 22nd, here's what I'm asking everyone who calls Discovery Home. If this isn't your home church, it's not for you. Please don't feel obligated at all. This is for those who like, this is your house. This is your family. This is, we're doing this together. This is for those people. So don't feel like like anyone's twisting your arms. We're so glad that you're here today. But those that call Discovery Home, there's this one year, like halfway point recommitment card. And many of you already made it a commitment last year. And this is an opportunity just to say, I'm still in, Pastor, let's go. And it might be a reanalyzing of what that looks like for you. Amen. For those of you that that maybe have never did this, you weren't here, you're new, you're new to discovery, maybe you've come in this last year. This is an opportunity for you then to pray about how you can join this unstoppable vision. And Whatever that looks like for you, it's not really an amount. Honestly, I don't care about the amount. I just want everyone to, to be a part, everyone. Even if it was like, I'm gonna give a dollar. Praise the Lord, just come. Amen, let's just do it together. Let's do it together. I want you to experience the benefit of doing together. So in the next few weeks, be praying. Be praying over this, put it in your prayers. And then on September 22nd, we'll bring this back together and we'll give together, trusting God is going to get us there. Amen? Amen. Let me give you the last feeling. Here's the question I want you to ask yourself. How can I use my time, treasure, to make an eternal difference? 
how can I use God? I got to guard this. I got to guard my participation in the church because my time, energy is, everyone's asking for it. And I'm like, it's just going to get spent and drained and wasted. It's going to get wasted on things that doesn't even count in the end. So how, God, how do you want me to use my time and my treasures that actually show up in heaven? That on that day, it doesn't burn up and isn't like, okay, you're saved, but it was a waste. It actually, there's a reward because of how I use my time and how I use my treasure. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.